there friends welcome to day four join me today as i have some fun and relax and enjoy the last day on board this ship let's go have some fun it's crazy how quickly the four days has gone by this cruise i'm really sad that it's already over i knew it would be this way it always is that way with vacations you get there on the first day and then before you know it, it's already time to pack and leave and get ready to go. I had such a great trip so far. I've had so much fun. I've met a lot of wonderful people and I really like this ship. It's really nice. I'd like to do another Disney cruise sometime, but for the price point, I don't think I will be able to do a Disney cruise in the near future. You get a lot more bang for your buck if you take a Princess Cruise or another cruise line, Royal Caribbean or Celebrity or Norwegian Cruise Line. And I think Disney is really good at catering to families, but someone like myself, like a solo traveler, I think Princess is probably just a more affordable and better option overall. I think, to be honest, the food on Princess is a little bit of a higher quality overall than the Disney ship. The food hasn't been bad, but most people that I've talked to agree they were disappointed with the food that we've been served and nothing wowed them or was outstanding. Whereas other cruise lines have a lot of things that are outstanding and better than your general restaurants on land. This ship serves food that's pretty much on par with any restaurant on land. It's nothing amazing, nothing spectacular. I'm still glad to be here. I'm very grateful to be here. I liked the food that I had on this trip. We're gonna continue eating today. Let's go to breakfast. I'm gonna try the sit down breakfast at Triton's this morning. So let's go to breakfast and I'll show you guys what that looks like. So this is the Cadillac Lounge. This is one of the adults only place where they have live music at night and it's just a general bar. It's very nice inside, very fancy. I like the leather touches everywhere, the fake gas pump out front. The theming's really nice in this place. It's just really upscale feeling. And they have different wine tasting events and different events throughout the day in the Cadillac Lounge. So you have to sign up for those ahead of time. They have happy hour songs for the night chocolate and liquor tasting, a mixology class, Keys and Melodies by Lenora Claire. That's who I watched last night. She's incredible. I'd like to come back and see her again tonight. Azure is also on deck three right next to the Cadillac Lounge in the Crown and Finn Pub. And this is where you can find bingo and game shows and things for the family. There's different activities through the day. This was also our meeting point for our tender boat that we took over to the excursion on Catalina Island. So it's used for a lot of different reasons. And there's also a bar inside here as well. Tonight it looks like they have a silent dance party here at 11. That's an 18 plus event. They have bingo, $10,000 mega jackpot bingo. Today, Disney Tunes trivia, towel folding, that's cool. Majority Minds, which is a game show. That towel folding class would be kind of cool actually. This is what Azure looks like inside. There's a lot of seats in here, very comfortable seating too. I like the furniture on the Disney ship. It's all nice furniture, good quality. There's a little stage, there's the bar there in the back. And I like the carpeting in here. I think the carpeting is really unique and very nice looking. All right, so I'm all done with breakfast at Triton's this morning, and it was nice. I personally would recommend doing the buffets. In fact, the table next to me actually got frustrated with the wait times, and they actually left after placing their orders, and they were saying, we're gonna go to the buffet, and the head waiter, the head server came over and asked them what was wrong, and they said, well, we've been waiting 45 minutes, and our kids are really hungry, and we just want to eat food, and they hadn't been served food yet. I did wait almost an hour to get food, so that was kind of a bummer. I understand it's not the crew member's faults. This has been a general thing throughout the entire cruise. The crew is running around, they're hustling, they're trying as hard as they possibly can. The guest to crew ratio is not as good as Princess. There are not enough crew members assigned to the dining rooms and to the serving positions. I feel really bad for them because it puts a big workload on them when they have too many tables to wait on and they just can't keep up with the demand. You know, pouring all the coffees, getting all the juices, getting the water refills. It was hard for me to get a coffee or water refill this morning and I honestly felt bad even asking for a water or coffee refill because they were so hectically busy. 
but the food itself was fine. What I really liked, let me try to turn this around and be positive. I really liked that you can order an omelet and that you can customize the omelet because I love a good omelet for breakfast. One of my favorite things to have for breakfast. I got mushrooms and onions, sausage and bell peppers and the omelet was very delicious. The fruit plate was laughably tiny. I mean, what is with these small portions? I've never been on a cruise before that had such small portions. I'm sure they're trying to mitigate the food waste and prevent too much food from being wasted, but they should be serving sizes that'll fill you up somewhat. I got a fruit plate and I'll show you guys here. It was papaya that was completely underripe, the mango was underripe, and the cantaloupe was underripe too. It didn't taste like anything at all. The strawberries and the blueberry, I shouldn't even say strawberries, plural. The strawberry and the blueberries were good. You got four blueberries and there was one half of a strawberry cut into quarters. So two little tiny pieces of strawberry. I wish I had gotten like a couple of strawberries, maybe some pineapple would have been nice and having ripe fruit would be nice too. Disney's usually really good at getting ripe fruit. The buffet has fantastic quality fruit and you can scoop out as much as you want. If you've seen in my other days that I've gone to the buffet, obviously my plate is like a third fruit. I love having fruit for breakfast. So that was a little bit of a disappointment. They come around with a little bread service, which is nice. They have a tray of pastries that you can choose from. The blueberry muffin was pretty good. It's not my favorite muffin in the world, but it's definitely a, a pretty good blueberry muffin. And the croissants are fantastic. They have these little mini croissants you can grab from the tray, and those were absolutely delicious. I really like the croissant a lot. My omelet was really good. The eggs were, they say you get two eggs on the plate. It was a scoop, like a melon baller of eggs. It was probably two or three tablespoons of egg. It was very odd, like three bites of egg. And then I got one hash brown, two pieces of sausage, which I love. The hash browns are fantastic. And the bacon's just your typical kind of buffet style bacon. It's not very good. It's It was really crispy today, which was nice. I like the crunch to it. But I don't know, you know how like hotel and buffet bacon is always just a different type and it doesn't taste quite as good as restaurant style bacon or the bacon you buy in the grocery store and make at home. It wasn't bad, it just wasn't the best. I'm full though, I'm still grateful for the service I had. It was a good meal, it just took far too long to eat breakfast. So I definitely recommend going to the buffet. The buffet has a lot more options, much more variety. You can grab more portions if you want bigger portions or smaller portions. You know, you can really mix it up. This was like you had to order a breakfast plate specifically by name. So if you wanted just one Mickey waffle, you'd have to order, I think comes as too many Mickey waffles. And I just wanted one or like one little pancake or French toast like I had done the other days. So now I know tomorrow I'll definitely do the buffet again for breakfast. That's just a better option overall. And yeah, I'm gonna go to trivia after this. There's a trivia coming up. It's a TV show quote trivia. It should be pretty hard. I'm gonna do that this morning. I think I'm gonna do like four trivias today. I looked at the daily schedule of eight breakfast and I think most of what I'm gonna to do today is actually trivia. So let's go have some fun doing that. All right, now after breakfast, I'm gonna to go to the Crown and Finn for the TV catchphrases trivia. This should be a hard one. We'll see if we can get a team to join because this one's gonna be very difficult, I bet. Up your nose with a rubber hose. Up your nose. So I've done three trivias today. You guys didn't miss much. I joined up with a nice family that was nice enough to invite me into their group. And that's what's great about Disney people. You can always meet friends through Disney and it was fun. So there wasn't much to record. It was just trivia, you know, 20 questions each. The first one was the one I showed you guys, the TV show trivia. And then there was a Disney general trivia, which was level two. We did pretty good. We got 13 out of 20, which was not bad. Our combined score was better than individual scores would have been because we both helped, we helped each other out a lot on that one. And then the next one, I joined them again for Disney Tunes. It's the same one where they play a little bit of a Disney song and you have to name the name of the movie or the name of the attraction and the name of the song. Very hard on that one. We ended up with an 18 out of 20, so that wasn't too bad. On the first one, I got a 17 out of 39 on my own, which is not that bad for being on your own. I think the highest score on that one was only like a 26 anyways. It was a very difficult quiz, very difficult. I mean, they would give you just one word or a very short quote from a TV show, and you had to name the character and the TV show, so the highest score was not that high anyways. I had a lot of fun so far today. I really have just been having a great time relaxing. I'm gonna do trivia all day. I'm doing two more trivias coming up. My friends um, from dinner last night, they're gonna join me for, our, for the trivia at 4.30, so we'll try that out. They have to go get ready and get showered and stuff, so I'm gonna go to the three o'clock trivia by myself. 
but we just had lunch at Cabana's Buffet together, and that was amazing. That was really, really good. The food is fantastic, actually, in the buffet. Really good quality food, and there was a lot of it. There's just so much variety. There's something for everybody there. Really good. I had tri-tip, mac and cheese, a little bit of rice that I poured some stew on top. That was tasty. The focaccia bread was really, really nice. I liked that a lot. I had a small side salad, which is just a basic salad. It was just spinach with romaine, which I really like. The broccoli was fine. Again, it was just uncooked broccoli for the most part, heated through on the outside. It was good meal overall, though. I really enjoyed it. The chicken was the worst part. The chicken on board is just unseasoned chicken. I guess it's just for picky eaters that won't eat anything else. No flavor to it. Me and my friend both took one bite and we were like, oh no, we are, we're not gonna finish that. The pork schnitzel was okay. It wasn't bad. It was nice and crispy. It just wasn't super flavorful, but I did like it. I wish it had an applesauce or something on the side for it. That probably would have been good. I probably should have put sour cream or applesauce, but I didn't really see any around. Sour cream, I'm sure they had. I don't even know if they had applesauce today though. I'm not sure but the pork schnitzel wasn't bad the potatoes that were served with the pork schnitzel next to them though it was potatoes with bacon and they were really good super flavorful better than the breakfast potatoes for sure i could eat those i could eat the whole plate of those and my favorite part was the barbecue short ribs nice tender fall apart beef really good short ribs and the barbecue flavoring was super good it was seasoned really well really enjoyable and then i had a chocolate coconut cake for dessert that was awesome. One of the best desserts that I've had so far. I had the carrot cake, and that was the same carrot cake that I had the first day at Tiana's place, and that was good. Nice tart lemon cream cheese frosting, not too sweet. Not very sweet at all, actually, for carrot cake. It was good, I liked it a lot. And then I went and got a mango ice cream cone for my second dessert and mango is the flavor of the day. It was good. The mango flavor wasn't super prominent, but it was really good. Creamy, light mango flavor to it, really delicious. I like the banana ice cream the best, but mango is a close second. So I'm gonna go to the next trivia. There won't be much to film or anything. It's mostly just gonna be food today, and I'll show you guys around the ship a little bit more today too. Just some of the locations that are public spaces and areas that you can use and go to. Some of the lounges, I'll show you guys some of that. So stay tuned. So out here on the top deck, deck nine and up to tech 10 they have the quiet cove pool which is the adults only pool it's really nice it has a hot tub as well as a shower that you can shower off in two hot tubs a decent sized pool and there's a bar called signals bar too they do like happy hour specials here i think sometime around five they have happy hour which is 30 percent off drinks so it gets very busy around then and it's a pretty popular pool in general it's nice to be able to relax though up here without the noise of the kids and like i had said before there's no movie screen out here, so there's no noise from that either. And at the back of Deck 10, they have a sports court here. There's some foosball and some basketball that you can play. It's just a little activity sports place up here. All right, so the Disney Plus trivia was super difficult. I joined up with the family that I did trivia with earlier, and we got seven out of 20 correct. It was very, very difficult. The winner only got 15 out of 20, so that just shows you how hard it actually was. And then I met up with my friends again, the ones I've been having dinner with and had met on the first day. And we did really good on the second trivia. It was a Disney animation trivia. We had 18 out of 20. And there was one that we just didn't know, the name of Mulan's horse, which is Khan. We, we all didn't know that one. And there was one that we went back and forth on because it was Beauty and the Beast, how long does the curse last? And I was saying 10 years because I remember thinking and when I stayed around the show, I remember having the conversation of like, why would this enchantress, this enchantress curse a 11 year old boy because it goes to his 21st birthday but we got kind of tricked too because one of the choices was 21 years so we picked 21 years which was wrong so we missed two but we did good i mean 18 out of 20 is a really good score so it was a lot of fun getting ready for the show now i'm going to put on some pants because it's getting colder out there and we're going to watch the show the disney dreams show tonight it's going to be a really great show and then our dinner will be after that and we have a farewell, a final farewell in the atrium at the end of the night at 10.15, and that's gonna be it. I'm gonna get up tomorrow, eat breakfast, and get off the ship first thing in the morning. So unfortunately, it's coming to an end, but like I keep saying, I've had such a great time, such a fantastic experience. I really, really enjoyed this cruise a lot. So let's have some more fun tonight, and just enjoy it while it lasts. So I've been home for a couple of days now since the cruise, but I wanted to catch you guys up with the end of my last night on the Disney Wonder just to fill in the gaps of what I did. I went to the show Disney Dreams, an Enchanted Classic, and I watched that with my friends. 
that was great. The entertainment on this ship was the best part of the entire cruise, in my opinion. Really liked the theater shows. It was an original show. It kind of told the story of this little girl who was about to start middle school the next day. And in the middle of the night, she had dreams and had to learn how to fly with the help of Peter Pan. And the performers were incredible. It was kind of like a variety show like the Golden Mickeys the first night was. It just had song and dance numbers from your favorite Disney movies. And it was really fantastic. Super enjoyable. All the performances were right around an hour long. So not too long for the kids, but just long enough to enjoy them. It was a great, great show. Then we went to dinner. It was our last dinner. This one was at Triton's, which is the most upset scale. This dining room had the least amount of Disney, but it was definitely the most upscale of the of all three dining rooms that we dined in. It was a nice dinner, really good. The food was a little higher quality at this one too. However, there was no entertainment of any kind, and that kind of is a bummer. I did like the entertainment at Tiana's and Animator's Palette a lot, and I was hoping they had a little bit of entertainment in this one, but there was nothing to be seen or heard while you were eating, just some light music, and it was a good dinner. By this point, I had learned that portion sizes were really small, so I ordered a couple different things to try. I got the fried brie with a cranberry orange compote. That was really good. It was distinctly brie, so if you do not like brie cheese, then you're not going to enjoy this one. I really liked it. I liked the orange compote that came with it. I got the French onion soup, which was okay. It wasn't the best French onion soup I've ever had. It was a bit flavorless, and there wasn't a lot of salty flavor to it. Usually with a French onion soup, it's fairly salty, but it wasn't bad. It just wasn't great. And then I got the farmhouse salad, and that was mostly just a plain spinach salad, not much to it. It was okay as well. It came with a little goat cheese crostini, and that wasn't that great. It was kind of old and had been sitting out. So it wasn't really the best salad, but it was fine. No complaints with it. And for the entree, I got the Chateau Briand filet steak. This was one of the best meals that I had on the cruise. I really enjoyed the steak. I had it cooked to medium, and it was about medium well. It was perfect for me. Bernay sauce was really nice, and the red wine jus was really, really nice that came with it. It was like an au jus reduction with red wine. I really enjoyed that a lot. And it came with some potatoes, which were actually really good, and some green beans. And these were some of the better vegetable sides that I had on the entire cruise. Really enjoyed that. It was a good meal. Good way to end the cruise meal since I was slightly disappointed with the rest of the food on the ship. The food in this dining room was much better than the other meals that we had. And for dessert, I had the creme brulee, which was really good. I finished that whole thing. It wasn't the best creme brulee in the world, but it was very good creme brulee. And I had the chocolate gateau cake. That was nice, but not my favorite. It did have a lot of coffee flavor to it, but the chocolate wasn't as rich as I'd like it to be. When you think chocolate ganache, you think you're going to be getting something very chocolatey and rich, and that wasn't the case. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't that great. After dinner, I went to watch the Till We Meet Again show with my friends. And it was basically a large character meet and greet. They pulled out many different characters onto the atrium of the ship. And you had an opportunity, you had about 10 minutes to line up and get pictures with the characters. The lines did get long really quick. So we just waited for Tiana and we met her and that was it. We wouldn't really have had time to meet the rest of the characters, which is not that big of a deal. I'd rather the kids meet them and stuff. I can see a lot of these characters in Disneyland. But it was a nice show at the end of that. After the character meet, they kind of all did a final farewell show and they sang a little bit and Mickey said goodbye so I'll put in some clips of that and what we saw right here
behind us. All seven of you, thank you for coming. And everybody in front of us. Right now, my friends, all that is left for us to say is from all of us to all of you. Till we meet. cute show I really enjoyed it I thought it was great and I definitely thought that was a nice and sentimental way to finish off the cruise very cute and at that point I said goodbye to my friends which was a little sad I mean I really enjoyed the cruise with these ladies I had so much more fun they made my trip a lot more magical than just being with myself the whole time they were just a fun pair they were a lot younger than I was and they still had that energy and vibrancy to them that allowed me to stay up late at night with them I wouldn't have stayed up late on my own but I wanted to do the trivia and the games and stuff with them. So I ended up staying up, up later than I normally would, which was really fun. I had a really great time. They definitely made my trip a lot more magical. So saying bye was kind of sad. We were parked in the same area and they said they'd say bye to me in the morning. But I told them, I doubt we'll see each other. We probably won't be leaving at the same time, which was correct. That, that's what ended up happening. So I'm glad we said our farewells that night. I was glad to be going home, but I was really sad that the cruise was over at this point. I really wish it could have lasted longer. It went by far too quickly. I did just want to share some final thoughts with you guys on my overall cruise now that I had a couple of days to process it. First and foremost, like I said, the food was the most disappointing part of the cruise for the price that you pay. And I do not want to sound like I'm complaining. I am not complaining. I'm just being very honest in my review. I always want to be honest with you guys. I always want to give you the most real version of me and the most real version of my opinion that I can. I try to be as positive as possible, but that was just the reality. Just to put this in perspective, this cruise was just over $2,000 for a four-night cruise. Now, $2,000 will get you the 16-day cruise in an interior stateroom with Princess to Hawaii. That's 16 nights on a cruise to Hawaii for the same price. And the food is much better on Princess, in my opinion, overall. And that's the general consensus I heard on this cruise. I didn't hear anybody say anything positive about the food on this cruise. All the remarks and conversations that I had, everybody was saying that they were fairly disappointed with the food quality and the service that was provided. And that is of no fault to the crew members. The crew were very understaffed. It's not their fault that the service was not quick or not always as attentive as it could be. For the price you pay, though, I'd expect better of Disney and that's just the reality of the situation and the weird thing I've never been on a cruise in my life and I've been on almost a dozen cruises so I have a metric to compare this to basically and I've never seen a cruise where the buffet was closed for dinner I thought that was very odd that you could only do the sit-down dinner the buffet in general was open very short hours 7 to 10 for breakfast up till 10 30 I think some mornings and for lunch it was usually open 11 30 to 2 15 and the rest of the time, you either had to get food through room service, which I didn't do because I didn't want to eat in my room alone. So I never even tried out the room service, but I've heard that's a good option. Or you could do the Daisy's Delights, Pinocchio's Pizza, or Pete's Boiler Bites. And the options are not that extensive at those places. So I could see how on a longer cruise you'd kind of start to go hungry after a little bit and you get bored of eating the same things, the same pizza, the same hot dogs and hamburgers over and over again. I've never been on a cruise that had such low availability of food. On Princess Cruises, there's the International Cafe that's always open. There's really good pizza on board and there's just a lot of options to eat no matter what time of day it is. 
Some of them, like the International Cafe, are 24-hour options. Disney's only 24-hour option is going to be your room service. So I did find that a little bit disappointing. I was kind of surprised at the lack of availability of food. And I heard that from other guests that I talked to. By the end of the cruise, I did know a couple dozen guests. And being by myself, you know, you're not distracted by others and conversation. So you tend to interact and stuff with more people. I did trivia with a lot, lot of groups of people. So I was sure to ask people's opinions. And obviously being on the cruise, that's a big topic that you talk about with strangers. And all, all the things that I've mentioned before have been corroborated by others on this cruise. It's not just my opinion alone. It's the same exact things I heard echoed over and over from other guests on this ship as well. The ship rating, I think the ship is really, really well maintained. I think it's a fantastic ship. I like the small size of it. I like that you could get around really easily. I thought that was a really big positive point to it. I love the ship. No complaints about the ship itself. The only thing that I did not care for too much was the rainforest room. I think a day pass would have been sufficient. The rainforest room on this ship, the steam rooms were broken a lot. I don't know if people were hitting the emergency stop buttons because they looked exactly like the buttons that were in the rainforest room showers. So I think people thought they were like effect buttons and were hitting them because I did see one lady do that. But the steam rooms didn't really work very often. The sauna wasn't even in the rainforest room it was actually in the changing room so you could use that without having a rainforest pass there were five heated loungers and the loungers were almost always taken up and there were three showers that you could use and the showers on princess in the spa room they have a scent and a sound to them these ones were called like the rainforest shower the tropical shower and the cold shower but they didn't have any like tropical or rainforest scent that i could detect and i used them a couple different times they weren't not they were nothing too special they were mostly just normal showers not not bad but i don't think i'd do that again i just don't think even the 70 dollars for the week was really worth it because i did end up getting board spending time in there. I mean, the whole point is to go in the steam rooms and if the steam rooms aren't working and there's no loungers to, sh to sh <laughs> if there's no loungers to sit in, then you're just kind of using the shower and the sauna over and over, which kind of defeats the whole purpose of having the rainforest room. Crew were the other best part about this cruise. We did meet an entertainment crew member and got closer to him. He was very nice, made our trip a little bit more extra special. Definitely appreciated the crew. They all worked very hard. They were really, really friendly for the most part. And most of them were very genuinely interested in how your trip was going, how your day was. My room steward was amazing. Our waiters were really, really good. They went above and beyond and worked very hard to make our cruise a really fantastic one. The other big problem that I had was my air conditioning didn't seem to work. I did ask maintenance. They came and they checked and they said there was no problems with the air conditioning. That was just as cool as the room would go. And I'd say the room was probably about 72 most of the time. I like it more like 68. I really like it cold to be able to sleep. So I did have a little bit of trouble falling asleep some nights and it just always seemed to be warm. When I got back from walking around the ship, I wanted a cool place of respite to just kind of relax and cool down quickly and I never had that no matter how much water I drank I always seemed to be thirsty because my room was very warm for the most part so the big question would I do a Disney cruise again absolutely yes I probably prefer Princess Cruise Lines just a little bit more I think Disney Cruise Lines are great if you have a family but for a solo traveler like myself Princess Cruises would be a little more appropriate. Virgin Voyages would be awesome to try out, but they don't come out to California. They only sail out of Miami. Miami is the closest port they sail out of, and that's kind of hard to have to do the plane flight and stuff. I like places that go out of Los Angeles and San Diego like Princess and Disney do, so I'd probably do a Princess one again. I'd like to do one with the family if I could on a Disney cruise, but there were points I got a little lonely. You know, you see a lot of families having fun, making memories with themselves, and just being by yourself was not the same. I liked the amount of lounges on the ship, but I think the entertainment overall was a little lacking. I did trivia six times on the last day because there wasn't much else to do besides trivia in comparison to other cruise lines. I know Royal Caribbean has a lot of entertainment, Celebrity, Norwegian Cruise Line, they have a lot of entertainment. Princess has like 10 live musicians every night that can be seen all throughout the ship and during the daytime too. Almost any lounge or bar you walk to, you can find some live entertainment. So I kind of missed that on the Disney cruise. I did see some live entertainment. The pianist I saw was amazing, absolutely incredible. But I think overall, there were actually points where I found myself not knowing what to do next. And I've never had that on a cruise before. That was a new feeling to me. I did use the hot tubs and met some people there too. That was nice. 
The pool was warm and that was very nice. But overall, I think Princess is probably a better fit for me personally. I love the Disney magic though. You cannot replicate that feel of being on a Disney cruise ship. There is something magical, even if it's inexplicable. There's just something super special about being on a Disney cruise. And I really did feel that and I really did appreciate that. But thank you guys. I hope you had fun on this journey, this adventure with me. I had a great cruise, a really, really great cruise. I wish I could cruise more often, but I don't think I'll be doing any more this year. So I'm just trying to reflect on this one, enjoy the memories that I made. It was hard to not overspend in the merchandise shops. They have white caps and Mickey's main sale. And there was so much unique merchandise that was exclusive to the cruise ship. It was really hard not to buy everything, but I'm gonna show you guys some of the things I got here. I found this Hakuna Matata Disney Cruise Line shirt. I love the Lion King. Love the colors of this. I like how it has the cruise ship up top and the Disney Cruise Line logo at the bottom. Love the color of it. It's just a really soft and nice shirt. I ended up with four different pins. This is my favorite one here. Disney Wonder with Donald on it. Very cool pin. I got a Captain's pin. This is a special edition one with Mickey. Captain Mickey on it. I like that one a lot. This one's really cool. This is the Disney Wonder cruise pin with Donald 2 there and Huey, Dewey, and Louie just like on the ship. Now these pins just came out. These were newer ones, so I don't know what the availability would be like if you went on a cruise coming up. And I got, of course, my favorite character, Stitch. Castaway Key Surf School with Stitch on it. Now, obviously, we didn't go to Castaway Key, but I'd like to go there someday. That's an island in the Bahamas, that the pr Disney private island that's in the Bahamas. But I really like that Stitch was on it, so I had to get that pin. Here's a look at the Spirit jersey that I found. It has the Disney Cruise logo on the front. And on the back, it says Disney Wonder with Donald, Huey, Louie, and Dewey, since they are on the ship themselves painted up there. Really cool. I like the cuffs on this. Very cool. It has a very good nautical theme to it. I love that spirit jersey. Excited to wear that around the parks. And I found this button-up shirt that has all the Disney cruise ships on it. Really nice. It's a really soft shirt, too. You guys know how I like my shirts to be soft. Really nice. I like it a lot. And last but not least, I got two different mugs. I do have the Disney Wish version of this that my mom got when she went on the Disney Wish. She got that for me. So I got the Disney Wonder version of this mug. It is a little hard to drink out of. You have to drink out of the corner since it's a square mug. But I love the design on it. And I love that Donald, Huey, Dewey, and Louie are on there again. And it also says the Disney Wonder. And then I ended up getting this more generic Disney Cruise Line mug. I like that the handle looks like nautical ropes there. Almost like it's a macrame mug. And I like the texture on the bottom, the nice shiny golden Mickey logo, really nice mug. I've been using this one every day since I got home and I really love this mug a lot. So the merchandise I got was fantastic. And to each and every one of you, thank you guys for coming along with me. I appreciate you and I'll see you next time. <laughs>